Hi Leo, welcome to June. This is Teresa from Tower by T. So this month we have Mercury going direct on the 3rd and Saturn going retrograde on the 4th. Then on the 14th Mercury moves into Gemini and we have a full moon in Sagittarius which is favorable to your sign on the 14th also. Then at the end of the month we have the new moon in Cancer on the 28th and Neptune goes retrograde as well. So let's see what the cards say for Leo. What does Leo need to know about love and relationships for the month of June 2022? What's coming up for Leo? What is coming up for Leo in terms of relationships? June 2022. We survived the eclipses and Mercury retrograde, and here we are in June. Okay, let's see. What does Leo need to know? The Hermit. The Eight of Pentacles. The Queen of Swords, the High Priestess, the Death Card, the Two of Cups, the Hangman, the Strength Card, the Wound, the Seven of Swords, and the Nine, the card underneath the deck is the Nine of Pentacles. So you're starting out the month with the Hermit. You have a lot of thinking to do this month, Leo. The Hermit's a card of, you might have been keeping yourself isolated, um, doing a lot of soul searching, um, focusing on career instead of relationships. But the Hermit, you're trying to figure out, you know, what's right for you. What do I really need in a relationship? What do I need in a job? Um, what is, you know, because you're trying to make a decision about um, possibly ending, you know, moving on from something from the past, putting an end to a cycle that's not working, and then moving on to something better. Um, you have the Queen of Swords here, so you could be dealing with an air sign, or um, so that would be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If you're not dealing with an air sign, you're dealing with someone who has been hurt in the past, and someone who is very independent. And this could have been this could be someone that you dealt with in the past because it is the basis of your um, of your reading. Someone who and this could even be your energy if it's not a person that you're involved with because this is a general reading. So I'm trying to cover all the different possibilities that it could be. But the Queen of Swords energy is someone who has built a wall up around her and is very independent. It's like, I don't need anybody, don't, you know, worry about me. Because she's been in relationships in the past, and she's been hurt. And so now she's a lot more cautious. And instead of letting her heart rule her head, she's letting her head rule her heart and emotions. She might even, um, you have this pe nine of pentacles here. This is someone who's very independent and doesn't really need a relationship for financial security. She has her own money. She has her own house or a place to live at least. and She feels secure in that. She might even have her own business with the Nine of Pentacles because that's the entrepreneur card or that's someone who is um, who's in charge of her career, in charge of her life, but she is starting to feel lonely um, and wishes she had someone to share it with. So if this is not your energy, this could be a partner that you're dealing with that you might be or you have dealt with in the past since this is kind of the past. The high priestess is here. So this person could be very intuitive as well. The high priestess is things that are hidden, things that are behind the scenes, things that are where you don't really know what's going on. But you have to use your intuition. Your intuition, you may have a psychic connection with someone so even if you're not communicating, you know what's going on with them because you have such a close, I feel like you have this soulmate connection, or you've had in the past at least. Um, and 
And then we have the death. And we have a lot of major arcana in this reading. So we have the death card coming up with the Two of Cups. Now, the Two of Cups energy in the near future is a, it could be a romantic partnership. If it's not a partnership, a soulmate connection, it could be a good friendship. But it's someone that you see really eye to eye with. Um, and I always see the Two of Cups as a soulmate connection, whether it's a romantic partnership or a friendship, no matter what the connection is, you know each other. You, you blend well together. Um, you're highly compatible. But I also see the death card here. I feel like there's a cycle in your life that's ending. And you need to release it to take advantage of this Two of Cups potential. Because right now it's in the future. It's not here in the now. Um, but it's coming in the future. But you have to release the past before you can move on to this new relationship. Because the death card is about, it's not necessarily a physical death. It rarely is a physical death. It usually means the death of a way of life, the death of, the, of an old cycle. And you might still be carrying something from the past in your heart that's, not, that's preventing you from connecting with someone in the present and in the future. So you have to, with the death card, you have to kind of bless the past, release the past, bless it, and close the door, you know, bless it, forgive it. If, if there's something happened in a relationship, you have to forgive you, yourself, the other person. You have to put it to bed. You have to put it to rest. And with that, you will be ending a cycle and clearing out all that stuff that's still taking up space in your head and in your heart. Um, and if you could do that, then we're coming into the Two of Cups energy and you have the hangman here this is about seeing things from a different perspective it's about giving something up for something better so maybe there's a relationship in your life that's ending for some of you you might feel like um, it's not what it used to be or things have changed and you're looking at the potential of the future the hangman is also Mm. it's about making a sacrifice. It's about also feeling like you're in limbo. So I feel like you're, you're kind of in transition right now at the beginning of the month, and you may not feel the energy of this Two of Cups right away. It may take a couple of weeks into June. So I'm thinking like mid-June when you may start feeling this Two of Cups energy, this relationship that you may want to work on or you may connect with someone in a very um in a very harmonious way or soulmate way but it's going to involve having to give something up you have to make a sacrifice so it's like you have to sacrifice one thing to move into this other thing and the hangman um normally the hangman means giving you know having patience um willing to see things from another perspective Maybe you've been locked into one your your view and you're not looking at the other person's view and you need to incorporate their side into your equation. In your environment, you have the strength card. This could be the other person's perspective. It's happening in your environment. This is it's the lion. It, it could be you um, that you were in a relationship where you had someone who's there to help you heal. Um, the strength card is about learning how to tame the beast within, learning how to not overreact, learning how to control your anger or your emotions so that you're not going over the top with things. Um, maybe in the past relationship, you might have been overly emotional in a situation. Um, maybe you have... The, the strength card is also a card... with. It comes up a lot of times when people have lessons around anger, how to release anger in a healthy way, how to deal with your emotions, how to not go to extremes of emotion, how to learn how to control that inner beast so you're not hurting the people around you, so that you're learning how to get your needs met in a more calm way, in a more peaceful way. But I feel like there's a person in your environment who's helping you to heal. Um, because if you look at this photograph, uh, this image, this artwork, 
she's taking a a um a nail or a thorn out of the lion's paw so he's wounded the lion is wounded and this person is helping them heal their wound and the lion has a very is very powerful the, the lion can destroy or devour this person but this person has no fear this person has a lot of compassion and they want to help the lion to heal so there could be someone in your life that wants to help you but you're so you might be locked into an emotional roller coaster and you can't let anyone get close to you or you're just roaring and you're pe pushing people away or you haven't let go of the past and you have the moon here with the seven swords and the hangman so there was some kind of betrayal um, you may feel that you're a victim that you were made the scapegoat for something that you were blamed for something maybe that you didn't do or the moon is your you're not your thinking is confused um, you're not seeing things clearly with the moon um, and so your imagination is going over over time you may be feeling like I don't know you know if you were betrayed in the past in past relationships and this new relationship comes in or this new energy of the soulmate connection you may feel like I don't know if I can trust it will I be betrayed again if I let this person get close to me am I going to be hurt are they can I trust this person with my love with my heart um, the seven of swords sometimes it comes up as the thief card you may feel like someone's trying to take things away from you something away from you they're trying to steal something from you or they're not being totally transparent with you you may feel that someone in your life is not being honest and you're, you're kind of having a sense of mistrust or paranoia but the other way that the devil uh, uh, the seven of swords can manifest is that you're not facing the truth about something and so I think that this month is going to be a time of you facing the truth about not only the present but also the past and coming to closure coming to terms with it and then releasing it and sometimes the strength card if you're in a relationship that's going through some difficulties or you're with someone who's having difficulty either you or the other person counseling could help if you go to speak to someone especially because the hermit is here and the strength these are two cards that where you go where you seek help from someone else from someone else's wisdom um, and even the high priestess but it's also about taking time out and quieting your mind to hear your own inner voice and your own divine um, guidance so if you've been too busy or wrapped up in a drama and you haven't had time to sit and listen to that inner voice it's going to point you in the right direction and so you'll know what to do because right now at the beginning with the hermit you're kind of like feeling lonely really the, the hermit is like a lonely card feeling like I wish I was in a relationship I wish I had love or if you're not in a relationship and sometimes you could feel lonely even when you are in a relationship you know if you're not with the right person or you feel neglected in some way you may feel like yeah I'm with this person but it's, I might as well be alone because they're not there for me um, so those are some of the feelings that are coming up the positive things is that you have this two of cups here so there's potential to have that connection but I feel like you have some hurdles to go through before you can reach the beauty of the two of cups and it may involve releasing the past closing the door on a past relationship or a past memory facing the truth about everything and so that you can have some closure and you're not carrying this burden getting counseling or help or guidance um, so that you're seeing things clearly getting another person's perspective because maybe your perspective might be a little t distorted you may not be seeing things the way they really are especially with the moon here um, but I think that and you have to have patience the hangman is also a card of be patient just because things are kind of foggy right now doesn't mean they'll always be that way and this, when the fog clears you might find yourself face to face with a partner that you can really connect to um, 
but it will be at the beginning stages, so take your time. Don't rush into anything. And also, the thing I forgot to mention with this Nine of Pentacles, she's got the hawk as her power animal. The hawk usually means a message is coming. So you may get a message from someone that um, that will affect you on a deep level or an important message. And it could change how you're feeling now from lonely to being connected with someone. So let's see uh, what the astrology has to say. So we have the full moon in Sagittarius, Leo. And that's in your fifth house of love and romance and children. Fun. So the moon is in your fifth house. The sun is in the eleventh house. And it's squaring Neptune in your eighth house. The house of intimacy. The house of sex, death, and transformation. Uh, it's where you need to, where you, it's the house where you have to face your demons, where you have to be conscious. I mean, you know, everybody knows what their flaws are. We may not want to face them. We know what we're doing sometimes. That's the eighth house. The eighth house is your conscious, um, The dark, it's like facing the shadow. How could I put that? Um, the twelfth house is the house where you don't see it. It's blind to you. You you know everybody could see something that's so that's about you, but you don't see it. Um, but this is the eighth house, so you see it. You may just not want to look at it. Um, but something is coming to completion or closure around a friendship, around a romance, because the eleventh house is the house of friends, the groups you belong to, um, goals, dreams, wishes. You either you can be completing something that's bringing closure in a good way. Because you have Saturn in the seventh house that's forming a trine to the sun and sextile to the moon. So, but it, I feel like you have to get serious about a relationship if you want it to last. You can't, and what I mean by serious, because Saturn rep represents seeing the reality of a relationship in the seventh, realizing where you need to get serious and make a commitment and do the work. So if you've been avoiding, like if you haven't been putting any energy into a relationship and it's and you're having problems, it's because you're not giving your, you're not fulfilling your side. You know, it takes two to tango. You can, I mean, if one person's doing all the work and the other person's not doing anything, the relationship is going to fall apart. So Saturn is saying you have to be willing to do the work. I will give you longevity. I will give you stability. But you have to commit. You have to do the work. You have to be, get serious. You know, this is, um, you can't just be playing a game anymore. Um, in the 10th house, you have Venus and Uranus and the North Node. So your life direction is changing. You might change what, you know, you might be having success in your career, uh, unexpected success in your career. If you're doing whatever you're doing, you're loving it. So Venus there could mean something creative, artistic, music, art, um, in Taurus, it could even be something around planting seeds, like a garden, planting, you know, feeding, or beauty, doing something that involves um, beautifying something. Um, but you're looking for security in love, and you can find that, and possibly unexpectedly. Um, but you have some things that you have to work out. Mercury's in the 11th and it's squaring Pluto. It's just moving into Gemini. So it's been retrograde all month in Taurus and then Gemini. And it moved back into Taurus. Now it's moving forward again into Gemini. And it's strong in Gemini. It's a communication planet and it's in the 11th house. So it may be time for you to speak your truth or to communicate to the people that you care about, friendships, the groups that you belong to, maybe even write something. Get involved, get more social. Um, Mercury is squaring Pluto in the sixth. It's an out of sign square, but it's still there. Um, Pluto's transforming the way you take care of yourself. And, you know, so your health, if you've been avoiding a health issue, you need to face it now. Maybe change your habits, change your lifestyle in a big way. Because um, Pluto represents complete transformation. Um, even the work that you do might change on a dramatic scale. The things that you were once interested in may no longer interest you and you might be on a new path um, that's more fulfilling. Mars is conjunct Chiron in the ninth house in Aries. You might feel like traveling. 
You might decide, you know what, I want to, I want to explore my, I want to get out of my narrow confines. I want to, you know, travel. I want to move away, move somewhere. Um, or you might decide that, because the ninth house is the house of higher education, you might decide, well, maybe I need some training. I want to go back to school. I want to finish my degree. Or I want to teach something or I want to learn something. You could be offered a teaching position. Um, maybe you're dealing with, uh, you, you know, because Chiron is the wounded healer. So you have wisdom to share about your wounds. Maybe you can help others by teaching them what you've gone through so that they don't fall in the same trap and they don't make the same mistakes you made. Mars could also mean um, changing your belief system, fighting for what you believe in, because the ninth house has to do with spirituality, wisdom, you know, what you believe is possible. Um, but you're on the way up with, with Mars in the ninth. It's also a travel house. So you want to be careful not to rush into anything. You know, take your time when you're driving. Don't drive when you're angry. Um, but you may feel like going on a trip where you branch, branch out from your local environment. Maybe you want to move to a foreign place or move far away and experience a different way of life. That could be a possibility too. Saturn goes retrograde. Saturn's in your... Let's see what house, seventh house, and it's going to retrograde on June 4th. So you may be rethinking your relationships and your partnerships, both business and personal. And once you see the reality that Saturn shows you, you could decide, do I want to stay in this relationship or not? And that goes for business partnerships because the seventh house is committed partnerships. So it could be a marriage. It could be a relationship that where you've been with someone for a long time. Even if it's not a marriage, legal tie, it's a relationship that's serious. You know, you're living together or you're sharing life together. And also your business partnerships. So you're going to get serious. You have to get, things are going to get real in June. You're going to see the truth about certain areas in your life and where you need, what you need to keep and what you need to let go of. Um, then we go to the new moon in Cancer. And the new moon in Cancer is in your 12th house. And that's the psychological house. So if you do the work at the full moon, the full moon in Sagittarius is showing you what needs to be done, showing you where you need to heal and what, where you need to take action. The new moon is the new beginning. And in the 12th house, it's about, okay, I've cleared out the, pa the baggage of the past. I'm doing the psychological work I need to do. I'm working on my wounds. I'm working on my, how I sabotage myself. How I can be sometimes my worst enemy. The 12th house is also the house of your enemies. But it also offers you a chance for a new start. Where you can get the love and the nurturing that you need. Because cancer is a card of a mother. It's, it's the healer. It's the mother. It's the nurturer. So it's a time for healing. You can have a new beginning where you actually um, connect with people that can help you to heal. Jupiter is in the 9th house. It's squaring this new moon. So while Jupiter brings opportunity, when it's in a square, it sometimes brings over idealistic ideas. So don't go over the top with any idea. I mean, your ideas are good. The opportunities are there. But see them in a realistic light. Don't over idealize things where then you'll be disappointed or don't take on more than you can handle. Know what your limits are. Jupiter is sextile Venus in your 11th house. So that's really good for your friendships. You're going to feel supported by your friends. So if you need to travel, you might be traveling with friends. Or you might find love when you're on a vacation or traveling somewhere. Mars is in the ninth. It's sextile Saturn in the seventh. So if you can really do the work, you can save a relationship. Or you can bring in something that is a better fit. Um, Mercury is in the eleventh. You have a lot of... Um, your ninth house is activated and your 11th house. So the ninth house is telling you you have to see things from a different perspective. You have to expand your awareness and your belief system. And you might connect with someone that does that for you. And, you might, and with Venus in the 11th and Mercury in the 11th, you might be connecting with groups of people that are good for you. Um, and that can help you to heal from the past wounds and help you to become stronger. So... Um, I feel like this is going to be a healing time for you where you're going to release a lot of the baggage from the past and it's going to free you to learn how to connect in a good way with love with a partner that's 
that really feels like a soulmate. Because once you're not, when you work on the healing, healing your inner child, healing yourself, you'll you'll be more open to love and to receiving love. Um, so don't avoid what you need to face and focus on the positive outcome and let people help you. Don't don't push people away. Don't be like the Queen of Swords, because this could be your energy too, where you're like, I don't need anybody. I got it all taken care of, you know. Um we don't let your pride stand in the way of people who are there for you who want to help you. So that's my forecast, Leo. If this resonated with you, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. Um, if you'd like a private reading where we deal with just your specific situation, click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website. Now, in the meantime, I want to say thank you um, for supporting this channel. Thank you for your likes, your comments. If this resonated with you, please leave a comment. Uh, let me know what's going on in your life. And I hope you have a wonderful June. And we will talk again next month. Okay, bye now.